Today is April the 14th. Are we supposed to handle snakes as part of our worship? Let's find out together as we study Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 20. What a strange question to begin our devotional with this morning, and yet, what a strange practice that there are some in some remote places who as part of their worship will pass around poisonous snakes, rattlesnakes. Where does that come from? In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, Then Jesus told them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They'll cast out demons in my name. They'll speak in new languages. They'll be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They'll be able to place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. Now, in that passage, we see several uh, miraculous signs that... Uh, Jesus promises to his followers. Again, we are reading in a portion of the Gospel of Mark that we believe was added some 400 years after Mark wrote the Gospel. But whoever added this drew from the book of Acts. Each one of these things we find in the book of Acts. They cast out demons. Do you remember in Acts chapter 14 when Paul cast the demon out of the young woman who foretold the future? They will speak in tongues. Acts chapter 2 and then two more times in the book of Acts. Once with the Samaritans, once with Cornelius, three more times. And once with the disciples of John the Baptist. So four times they spoke in new tongues. They will be able to handle snakes. In Acts chapter 28, it tells the story of how Paul, um, being sent to Rome as a prisoner, was shipwrecked on the island of Malta. They built a fire, and out of the firewood comes a poisonous snake, and he latches on to Paul's wrist. The people sitting around said he must be a murderer because the goddess Justice has sent a snake to kill him. Paul shakes the snake off into the fire and nothing happens. That's what this passage was about. Not about handling snakes in our church services. They'll be able to drink poison. Now, At first glance, um, there is no reference in the book of Acts to anyone drinking poison and being unharmed. But actually what the passage says is they will be able to drink death. We do have, when Paul was in Lystra, an episode in which the people of the town of Lystra stoned him and they drug his body outside of the city. They believed he was dead. There are some who believe that Paul was dead and the Lord brought him back to life. Paul drank death and yet no harm came to him. He got up. You know what the first thing he did was? He went back into Lystra kept preaching. And then finally, uh, they will be able to heal. And we have many episodes of healing in the book of Acts. What this author is talking about are what has come to be called signs and wonders. In Acts chapter 2, verse 
22. Peter, in his first sermon to the people at the day of Pentecost, said, People of Israel, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus, the Nazarene, by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you well know. Peter says Jesus did signs and wonders. Then in Acts chapter 14, verse 3, Paul stayed in Iconium. The apostles stayed there a long time, preaching boldly about the grace of the Lord. And the Lord proved their message was true by giving them power to do miraculous signs and wonders. The preaching of the early apostles was accompanied by the same kind of miracles that Jesus did. Signs and wonders that authenticate the veracity of what they're saying. Their preaching was accompanied with signs and wonders. Back to the book of Mark, the last two verses. When the Lord Jesus had finished talking with them, he was taken up into heaven, and he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. And the disciples went everywhere and preached. And the Lord worked through them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. Here again, the author summarizes the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1, we see Jesus ascend into heaven. And then the rest of the book of Acts, the disciples go everywhere to all the known world of that time preaching the gospel. That's the way this particular author wants us to end the book of Mark. He looks at the question that's in Mark chapter 16, verse 8. Who is Jesus? He answers it for us. Mark may have wanted us to wrestle with that question, but even Mark wanted us to come to the answer that this author did. Jesus is God. We must go and preach his name. I encourage you to like, follow, and subscribe to this devotion on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Send questions you might have to questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we go back to the book of Mark. We'll pick it up in chapter 11 and look at the triumphal entry.